Welcome to the fourth chapter of my Balsa USA SPAD 13 built. As before, this is a video of still photos that I took during the construction. At this point, the model is coming along nicely. It is actually starting to look like the SPAD 13. One thing I have found out is this is probably the most sophisticated or complicated model airplane that I have built to date. So let's get started. Here you can see uh, basically a very crude uh, saddle bracket that I made to set the, the model in so I could work on it, hold it stabilized. Uh, as you know, models tend not to be made to, to sit flat on a bench, so this seemed to be the easiest way to do that. This is also the point where I was getting ready to lay the side stringers to give the, the fuselage its final shape. There are two stringers per side, and they're made up of 1 8 inch square balsa sticks that are glued and then laminated one on top of the other to arrive at a half inch and a 3 8 inch stringers. These are then reinforced with balsa wood gussets to give them some strength. The trick here was to get the first stringer accurately laid down before adding the other ones on top of it, otherwise you would have a very poor align. With this section completed, it was now time to move on to the nose bowl construction. The nose bowl is made of ABS plastic, and there are basswood slats that are used to imitate the shutters that would be on the full, sail, full scale spad. A unique feature of the nose bowl is it is actually attached from the rear so that there are no attachment bolts, screws, or anything visible from the exterior. Due to the very short moment from the CG to the propeller, I elected to follow the manual's recommendation that I install lead weights in the nose bolt. This added three quarters of a pound at the farthest point from the CG, so it should be very effective. The chin cowl is also of ABS plastic with multiple louvers that have to be opened up to allow for proper ventilation of the engine. A not so steady hand, Dremel tool, and some files, and eventually the louvers were opened up and it did come out satisfactory. At this point, balsa forms are laminated together and then attached to the nose bowl to give it the final frontal shape. Once this was completed, it was time to take the chin cowl and customize it to fit to the fuselage and also to the nose bowl. It took a while, but eventually the chin cowl was attached to the fuselage, matched up to the sides, and made it so that it would not interfere with the wing installation. With this completed, it was now time to shape, fill, the plywood forms of the nose bowl. While waiting for the glue to dry, I took the opportunity to start the exhaust stack pipes, which were going to have to be installed at some point in time. Here you can see the sanded, filled, and blended nose bowl as it attaches to the fuselage. The SPAD has lots of ventilation covers, particularly in the engine area, so I took the opportunity at this time to, as I was working with the Dremel tool anyway, get these started and finished without making too much of a mess. The engine firewall and engine installation was tackled next. The engine firewall is installed to accommodate the engine that you decide to use on your model. This involves setting the depth of the firewall and also ensuring the motor mounts are installed to allow the propeller shaft to exit through the center of the cowl. With the engine install roughed in, it was now time to make accommodations for the gas tank and also the batteries. To make it easy for maintenance, I decided to use a removable tray 
that I would have the gas tank and the batteries attached on the bottom and on top I would be able to put the ignition for the engine. The batteries were wrapped in foam and then the tank and the batteries were tie wrapped to the tray. With this tray secured by screws, now the servo tray and radio tray could be installed and secured with screws as well. This makes for a neat installation and should be easily accessible for maintenance. The engine was reinstalled, this time with the ignition leads attached to the spark plugs and there was a little bit of clearance issues on the fuselage sides that was easily uh, trimmed to fit. The engine install is now complete and the following pictures show the firewall with the anchor nuts and washers installed. The next series of pictures are showing the closing off of the engine compartment from the rest of the fuselage. Once the firewall is sealed, the only openings to the fuselage should be for the ignition, fuel lines, and operating controls. Of course, these will be sealed with silicone. With the engine compartment sealed, it's now time to install those fuel lines and engine controls, and eventually the ignition. I elected to use a two-line fuel tank system with a vent line and a fuel line directly to the engine. The fuel line has a T-fitting installed with an extension to an area just behind the cockpit where the scale fuel filling area would be. With this complete, it was time to move on to the installation of the scale exhaust stacks. These were fitted and then removed to allow for fuselage finishing. I decided now at this point, it was time to see just exactly what this was going to look like. So anyway, everything was installed, the wheels, obviously not the wings, they take up too much room, but I wanted to see what it was going to look like in the profile. First, first thoughts, it's very tall. I think I may have to reassess my transportation options. Well, that's a wrap for this chapter of my build. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I've been thinking about is maybe doing a special issue with modifications that I made to this model, particularly after I've finished it and flown it, so we have everything included. Let me know what you think about that. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned. More to come.